Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Parks and Rec Commission. I'm going to ask you all to stand to salute the flag, please. Thank you. We have a roll call. Chair Clark, Vice Chair Perry. Yes. Commissioner Baker. Commissioner Lesnar Buxton. Here. Commissioner Longstreet. Here. Commissioner Martinez Cohen. Here. Commissioner McGill. Here. Any agenda changes? Any written communications? I do have a letter from uh, Chair Clark, but I think I'll reread it when it's appropriate time. Public comment. Any member of the public may address the commission for up to two minutes on any subject within the jurisdiction of the commission that is not scheduled for public discussion before the commission. The total amount of time for public comments will be limited to 15 minutes. Do we have a representative from the Youth Council? Uh, oh. Sorry about that. Kathleen Bernardo. I'm here today to talk about the herbicide known as glyphosate, commonly sold as Roundup by Monsanto. My request is for this herbicide to be outright banned on all city property and ultimately on private property within the city of Santa Barbara. Wouldn't it be wonderful if our city, ground zero for the environmental movement and Earth Day, banned the use of glyphosate on all city property? What a message that would send to our community, to our state, and to the world. Glyphosate has been shown to be a probable human carcinogen causing non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and other cancers, as well as many other problems too numerous to mention here. Currently, dozens of countries around the world either outright ban it or restrict its use. Unfortunately, our own EPA maintains that glyphosate is not likely to be carcinogenic in nature. In 2017, California became the first state in the nation to issue a warning on glyphosate by adding the chemical to the state's Proposition 65 list of chemicals and substances known to cause cancer. Dozens of cities in California have restricted its use. On August of 2018, a San Francisco jury returned a verdict in the case of a former gardener with terminal cancer against the Monsanto company, ordering it to pay $78 million in damages for failing to warn consumers that exposure to Roundup weed ca killer causes cancer. Just this month, jurors in a federal court concluded that Roundup contributed to a second man's cancer. Now thousands more cases are pending against Monsanto. Ken Brown of the Parks and Recreation has told me that your own integrated pest management committee researched glyphosate and has guided the city council and your department on its use on city property. In light of the worldwide recognition of the dangers of glyphosate and the two recent court rulings mentioned, I believe review of your policy is needed. Thank you. Public comment is closed. Now our youth council. Thank you. Vice Chair Perry, we have Nathaniel Gedichu. Did I get it right? Excellent. Yeah. Here. Good. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me, Chair and Commissioners. Um, sorry, I just rushed in here at the last, last minute. So, um, so the youth council uh, is just starting our recruitment period, starting uh, March 19th. We're ending it in April 23rd. We're losing 10 members this year. A lot of us are seniors. So this is an extremely important recruitment period. So we ask that if there's anything that any of you can do to help us get new members, we would greatly appreciate it. Um, our members need to be between the ages of 13 and 19. For the most part, oh, for the most part, that's just um, junior high all the way to like juniors in high school. This year we really want to focus on getting um, underclassmen like freshmen and sophomores so that we don't have the same problem again, losing 10 people at once. Um, so yeah, and this is Marco, by the way. He's a fellow Hello, council member. <laughs> oh, sorry, can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so additionally, 
the youth council is still in the process of planning our teen leadership conference. I believe I talked a little bit about that last time I was here, but it's just a conference that we hold for people that we identify as teen leaders, um, and then they can learn about different um, concepts and teen issues that they would, we would hope they would take back to their communities and do something with that information. Um, that's going to be held on April 27th from 8 a.m. to about 12 or 12.30. We just partnered with PAL and Future Leaders of America. Um, and so we're going to be presenting on things such as gun safety, which you'll hear about a little later, um, teen vaping, and college resources, specifically the application for the DREAM Act. Um, Hello, Commission. My name is Marco Palmerin, and I'm a student at La Cuesta High School. I've been on the council since uh, June 2018. Um, I would like to talk to you about um, the gun safety ad hoc and CAGV uh, task force. Uh, we continue to work with the coalition um, against gun violence for, um, against gun violence a task force to make gun safety a priority in Santa Barbara. We have partnered with TVSB to receive training on how to produce public service announcements as a part of our community education campaign. We were fortunate that Councilman Oscar Gutierrez, our, U, our YC liaison, took the time out of his busy schedule to conduct two six-hour media camps trainings for UC members on Saturdays, no less, so we are very grateful for the that proactive support of our city council liaisons. Our community education, education campaigns will focus on the child access prevention laws, provides criminal penalties for gun owners who do not store their firearms appropriately to ensure that youth do not have access to an unsecured gun. Um, my second topic will be draft mail works, um, our April fundraiser. Our fundraisers, our fundraising com subcommittee has coordinated a fundraiser for the month of April in partnership with the Draftman Ale Works located at 1131 uh, State Street at the Mosaic Community. Draftman Ale Works is a microbrewery whose local goal, whose goal is to create a community with, a, with good people while inspiring positive change in our community, one beer at a time. They will donate $1 from each pint they sell from their, car from their Karma Tap to the Youth Council. Um, the Karma Tab is their one beer of the month to support any um, anyone. Um, I guess it's like their yeah their fundraising tab. Um, part of our community, part of part of our publicity for this fundraiser will include a handout reminding adults about the social host ordinance, which Youth Council helped get adopted as public policy in 2008. The social host ordinance is a law that holds people responsible for allowing underage drinking in their home. We hope that you will support this fundraiser, fundraiser event and get the word out. Thank you. Um, while we're up here, can we answer any questions? Yeah, I have a question. If we have a referral, where would we send them for somebody for to be recruited to be on the council? Um, okay. Well, just can you announce it so that maybe somebody watching will know? Uh, sure. They can be. Well, I, I guess you could okay. send their contact information to Roberta Payan. Okay. Um, I don't know if like her contact information is, is there, and then right there's there. interview dates. It looks like that are happening between May seventh and May twenty first. Yeah, those are our two interview dates. They're okay. also during regular meetings. I think they start at like five thirty, four thirty. Um, I was not told that information actually, so. <laughs> that's yeah, fine. regular meetings are the first and third Mondays of each month at 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. um, members contribute 10 to 20 hours per month. Okay, so send an email to Roberta Payan to get the application, and then you would show up at the interview, correct? Correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Just one quick question. Oh. The uh, leadership conference in April, how do you plan to advertise that to the community? I'm, I'm thinking of how I'd best to push it out to my neighbors and where to direct them. Um, so it's targeted towards teens, right? So we're going to be having a lot of flyers out at the local schools. And um, all the high schools have, like, some sort of, like, like newscast that airs, like, on the school TVs. Um, as far as the public, um, I, it's just our flyers being posted everywhere. Thank you. 
Thank you both. Thank you. We have committee assignments. Let's start down at this end. Um, yes, so the regularly scheduled meeting for the Creeks committee was canceled this month, although they did have a budget subcommittee meeting, which will probably be getting a presentation or a report on those details soon to come. Um, I attended the Neighborhood Advisory Council on the 13th, where they had a presentation on West Side and Lower West Side neighborhood traffic planning and it, they're beginning a process um, with the neighborhoods and the first meeting will be at Harding School on April 6th and they also had a, received a presentation on AUD and ADU um, projects so um, that was interesting and then yesterday I did attend the um, council to speak in support of the revitalization of De La Guerra Plaza. Mr. Buxton, do we have a report? Uh, yeah, I attended the youth council meeting and they're doing great work and they say they're probably some of the hardest working young people in the city. And I attended last week's meeting of the Park Foundation Board, um, went through the financials and had a fairly in-depth discussion and review of the Cabrillo Pavilion renovation. And I also went to the De La Guerra Plaza um, public workshop, which was certainly very energetically attended. I went to, yes, I forgot that one. I missed that, and I'm sorry. So I'd like to hear about it later. Um, Arts and crafts, I was not able to attend this month. The one thing I would say about De La Guerra Plaza is that there is information on the city's website. So if you're interested in staying abreast of what's going on about De La Guerra Plaza, you can go on to the city website and find. Um, they're gonna, by the end of the week, they're going to have a compilation of the comments that they received at the Saturday workshop. So that should be useful to all of us. Do we have any um, communications? Ceremonial items? We get to um, approve in, uh, the minutes of February 27th. Summary council action, thank you. Are there any questions? Motion. It's just an information. Okay. Minutes from February 27th. I move approval of the minutes of February 27th. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Street Tree Advisory Committee. Oh, you're already in place. Thank you. Mr. Downey? Chair Perry and Commissioners, the uh, first item on your agenda is 801C Ranch Drive. Um, it is a um, hybrid eucalyptus uh, between a couple of different so, uh, species, so we'll call it uh, eucalyptus species. Um, the applicant is uh, asking to remove the tree because they feel the tree is out of character with the neighborhood. Um, they're proposing to uh, plant uh, two trees in replacement of this tree. Um, at the October 24th, 2018 Parks and Recreation Commission meeting, um, the applicant had requested the removal of a queen palm on the same property. Um, that tree that got approved on the condition they plant a replacement tree somewhere within the setback. So the proposal also includes replacement tree for that approval. Um, so uh, if they uh, get approval for this tree, they're proposing to re replace those two trees with three replacement trees. 
the um, proposed replacement tree is uh, was noted by the Street Tree Advisory Committee to be on the list of invasive trees. Uh, so uh, they're not recommending that that species be planted. Uh, they reviewed the application materials and uh, determined that uh, the community would benefit from uh, the proposal and their recommendation is to approve this removal on the condition that uh, a tree that can achieve uh, or that the replacement trees not be on the invasive species list and uh, as proposed otherwise. Uh, Chair Perry and Commissioners, also I neglected to say, uh, Duke McPherson from the Street Advisory Committee is here if you have any questions of the committee uh, that he can answer. Does the Commission have any questions? No, no I don't have any. I don't think I have any questions on this one. It's, it's it's with the it's a little bit confusing this application and then the subsequent one with 801 and 829. And I, I'm hoping in the fullness of discussion this will all clear up. Uh, Chair Perry and Commissioner McGill, uh, this uh, application is separate from the next one on your agenda, and we'll discuss those trees uh, at, with the next item. I would make a motion to um, concur with the Street Tree Advisory Committee for the removal of the um, eucalyptus at 801 Sea Ranch Road and the replacement um, for three trees on the site along with the um, previous removal that are on, not on the California Native Plant Society list of invasive trees. Second. Does that cover all that we need in that motion? Okay. And we have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Chair Perry and Commissioners, the next item on your agenda is 801 slash 829 Sea Ranch Drive. Um, the applicant is, uh, doesn't live at either of those residents. Uh, they are requesting to remove trees on both of these properties in their application. Um, the, uh, the total number of trees is 10 trees. Uh, two of those trees are pines on the 801 property. Uh, the remainder of the trees are on the 829 property, two pine trees and uh, six eucalyptus trees. Um, the committee uh, reviewed that uh, application. The uh, part of the reasons that they want to remove the tree is the, the eucalyptus trees have been topped in the past um, and uh, their structure is not ideal. Um, and some of the pine trees have a disease, so they're requesting to remove the, uh, all of those trees. Uh, one of the benefits that they're stating in their proposal is that it would improve defensible space for the property due to uh, the uh, recognition of these species as being uh, undesirable in high fire hazard areas. Um, the trees that they're proposing to replace with currently are also on that invasive species list and the committee noted that they didn't want to see spread of that tree. Um, so the committee recommends that the commission approve on the condition the trees, uh, replacement trees are not on the invasive species list, that uh, they can achieve 20 to 30 feet in height, that three of the trees be placed in the area of the removals at 801. Um, one, of, one of the trees at 829 is actually very close to the property line, so it's, it's kind of three for three at that location. And six replacement trees um, on, along 829. So the recommendation, approve on the condition, not on the invasive species list, uh, 
potential to achieve 20 to 30 feet in height, three at the 801 location, and six at the 829 location. Are we ready for questions? Questions for the council? Um, Mr. Downey, will you, uh, we received a letter from a re <coughs> the, um, tenant in one place, and it's so unusual to be removing and having the applicant not be the owner of the property. Can you give me a little more clarity on that, please, and where the owners of 801 stand in this process, please? Okay. Uh, uh, well, 829, though, didn't have any, any um, negative. Okay. Uh, so that, uh, that was what was confusing me, so. Uh, Chair Perry and Commissioner Longstreet, um, the applicants brought this item to the Street Tree Advisory Committee a couple of months ago. And uh, at that time, staff was not aware that the adjacent property owners didn't know about the removal. So, uh, we discovered at the Street Advisory Committee meeting that there was some opposition. The owners of the properties hadn't been consulted. We recommended they go back and consult with the property owners and uh, discuss the item with them and come to a resolution. The owners, actual owners of the properties, did sign an application, which is in your packet. Um, the tenant at 829 does not support removal. Okay. Other questions? Okay, um, so looking at, again, the, some of the rationale for the removals and also the letter from the tenant, there seems to be, and, and re with ref and re referred, referenced the Arborist report. Um, can you help me, did, did the Street Tree Committee take a view or is there any outside view on the defensible space? Is this, is this, is this something that would be, recommend, would be recommended for defensible space? That's one question. And my other question was the Arborist report seems to really be very specific about which of the pines have disease and don't have disease and which could be selectively removed whereas the recommendation coming forward from the committee is, is a little bit more blanket. Can, can you talk to that a little bit? Chair Perry and Commissioner McGill, um, the committee did not comment on defensible space. Um, their comments were more related to the, the fact that the project is not totally denuding the canopy in the area, that, um, that by replacing with other trees, it really is not a substantial loss to the community. Um, and um, so they didn't really comment on the defensible space issue. Um, the, uh, I'm sorry, the second question one more time. Yes, and I, I do have a follow-up to that one as well. But um, it was really the blanket removal of pines versus selective removal of galls and, remo and removal of one small tree. Uh, Chair Perry and Commissioner McGill, the uh, Arborist report and letter was submitted after the committee met, so it's not something that they uh, had access to. Um, there are several experts on the, uh, on the committee and they did observe the condition of the eucalyptus trees and the uh, pine trees. The Arborist report states that Part of the condition of the pine trees relates to how closely they've grown together, creating some deadwood. This is natural for the species. I concur with that assessment. And then just one quick follow-up, sorry. Um, there's a paragraph in the letter from the tenant which talks about removal of 85% of the trees which are in the setback, whereas the stack commented that with, particularly with the planting of the new trees, they really wouldn't have a that significant an impact. When I went up there, I didn't go up the driveway for obvious reasons, but it appeared to me that looking back from the setback, there was actually quite a canopy further back on the property. Is that correct? That's correct, yes. We have public comment from Marilyn Dove. Dove?
Good afternoon, Commissioner. I'm Marilyn Dove, and I'm the tenant at 829. I'm lucky to be the tenant at 829 Seaford Drive. Um, the request says that uh, the trees are uh, diseased. That was number one reason. And the second reason, and there were only two, was that there was easier, something called easier defensible space. So in October, when this came up, all that was said in the uh, request was that the trees were unsightly or <clears throat> unattractive. But that request, I guess, was withdrawn, as was said. So uh, I went ahead to, and hired Bill Spiewak on October 16th to look and see if the trees are healthy. Now, he did notice that there were uh, gall and stuff like that beyond the setback, which is not uh, what we're talking about now. And he said that all the trees in the setback are healthy and mature, and that they just need some uh, tending, watering, and things like that. Now, uh, as far as I know, the landlord and I addressed all the issues that the arborist mentioned, including I had all the ivy removed within six foot around each tree and watered by hand with a drip irrigation, moving it around as much as I could that made sense with our uh, water restrictions. So um, I've provided that report to the commission, and I understand that Mr. Spiewak is one of the most noted uh, arborists in uh, Santa Barbara. So that gets rid of reason one, as far as I can see. Now, the second one, regarding the applicant's assertion of easier defensible space, I spoke to Mr. Christopher Braden, a fire services specialist for Santa Barbara, and his response was, the proposed tree removal falls outside what we, re we consider the required defensible space. Now, he did say he wasn't opposed to it, but he didn't say he was supported it. You're at time. That's the time? Okay. And also, the, the, it would uh, take away 85% of the trees which are in the setback. And they're all mature trees. They're beautiful Thank you. trees. Okay? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Carolyn Langson. No, you have 801. Yeah, I'm, I'm the property owner of 801 Sea Ranch. I don't really have any comments to the application. It's been relayed by your staff just as it's played out. I just wanted to reassure the commission that the first time around, the property owners were aware of the application. There just was, I think, an oversight in not having us sign the application. So um, that's kind of how it happened that we ended up going through this twice, I think. So. Anyway, so I'm just here if you have any questions. Thank you. Do we have any discussion? Questions? Yeah, I have a question. So it seems like there's a little bit of conflicting information. The, the stack committee determined that the trees are diseased. This report from Spiewak seems to say that they aren't as diseased. What's the real story here? I need some clarification. Uh, Chair Perry and Commissioner Martinez, the, uh, some of the trees do show signs of disease. As stated in the Arborist Report, that disease is treatable. It's not a reason necessarily by itself to remove the trees. Um, so uh, the committee did see some of that uh, disease as well. Um, it's, it's, it's not something that is overwhelming for the trees, but it is present. So I just want to make I just want to make sure I completely understand this. So the basis of first of all, point A, the the actual owner of the property of eight two nine has signed this application and supports it. Is that that's correct? Um, and then the basis for approve or supporting the removal is that the overall impact of the canopy is not going to be overwhelming given the replacement trees. The eucalyptus have been topped in a way and they're not structurally the way they should be. I'll just put it in, non, in layman's terms. And then there is some, not overwhelming, but there is some disease in the pines. Is, 
and so on balance that leads the committee com the committee to support the removal is that a correct summary that's correct statement yes um, I would say this when I first read the report it was an overwhelming amount of trees for removal and um, when I visited the site today it was a whole different perspective because um, there are that is a very overcrowded canopy and so that makes a um, it's, it's interesting just to see it on paper versus on site. So um, I was much relieved to look at that. Um, and as I, my previous question stated, I was a bit confused on how it got here. But I can support the recommendation of the Street Tree Advisory Committee. Um, I would say that on our um, Street Tree Advisory Committee, committee we have Duke McPherson who is also a um, quite highly prized arborist in our community along with our um, city arborist and I'm not I'm probably missing another one but that's who makes up the committee so I do trust that um, they can have a differing opinion from Mr. Spiewak and they were coming at it from different perspectives so um, I can support a motion to, uh, to agree with this stack recommendation. Before we have a motion, I have a letter from Chair Clark. Please communicate to the commission that after having visited each of the tree removal requested sites with Street Tree Advisory C Committee, I am in agreement with the Street Tree Advisory Committee's recommendations, except in regards to Sea Ranch Road. The trees there contribute to the urban forest. Removing them is equivalent to removing a beautiful grove with a mature forest canopy. I am convinced that adequate findings for removal were met. Unconvinced that adequate um, findings for removals were met. Uh, please note, I attended the IPM meeting and was pleased to hear Ken Brown's response to the community concerns regarding Roundup. So we can call for a motion. So, yeah, um, bearing in mind the, the letter that um, Chair Perry just read, I still will move that we, the commission approves the removal of the 10 trees as proposed on the condition that they are replaced with nine trees that are not on the California Native Plant Society list of invasive trees and have the potential to achieve 20 to 30 feet in height. Three at C Ranch 801 C Ranch Drive and six at 829 C Ranch Drive. I'll second the motion. All in favor? Wait. All in favor? Any discussion? Um, any discussion? Uh, no, it's to the commission now. It's not. Mr. Downey? There are eight trees on 829 property and six tree, or two trees on 801 property. The recommendation of the committee is to replace with six trees in the area along 829 and three trees along the area at 801. Thank you. I, I don't change the motion. Okay. We have a second. Any discussion? Wait, any discussion? Nope. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Carries. Um, and announce the appeal period, I think is a good Ten idea. Days. Ten day appeal period. There is a 10 day appeal period to this decision to go to city council. Mr. Downey? Uh, Chair Perry and commissioners, the next item on your agenda is 2122 Bass Street. The trees are actually located on a uh, side street called Jesmary Lane. Um, the, uh, there is one uh, avocado that's proposed for removal and one African fern pine. The applicant is requesting to uh, remove the trees because they're proposing to develop the garage into an uh, auxiliary dwelling unit. Uh, ADU. The uh, 
if approved, one of the requirements of that would be parking off street parking for the uh, the dwellings there. Um, they would be required to provide two spaces. Um, they are proposing to put those spaces between the current garage and the uh, current dwelling. So it would be a carport exactly where these two trees exist. The uh, The project does propose to, to develop a parkway along the Jesmary Lane side of the property, and uh, there is no current designated street tree for Jesmary Lane, but they have requested that the Street Tree Advisory Committee provide a recommendation to you at a later meeting for the street tree designation along there. They're proposing several trees in that space. The committee uh, determined that it's a reasonable development of the property. And uh, their recommendation is to uh, approve on the condition that a suitable number, suitable number of street trees be replaced along Jesmary Lane in the new parkway. Do we have questions of Mr. Downing? Want my comment? Go ahead. Um, just, I don't know if this, I don't know if this is an appropriate question, but I'm sure you'll tell me if it isn't. <laughs> um, um, when I went and when I look at the rationale for this application, which is basically to provide parking for, for a development, and then I kind of cast back a couple of months to Castillo, where we turned down a very similar, well, not a very similar request, but a request to remove a tree to provide parking for a development. Uh, but how, how does the committee look at consistency in those recommendations? It was, and then recognizing that was a big old oak on Castillo, and uh, Chair Perry and Commissioner McGill, the committee considers each tree on a case-by-case -case basis based on the, the parameters uh, given to them at that location. Um, the committee did comment that they felt that overall with the replacement trees proposed for this uh, location, the uh, overall benefit to the community would be a, a plus rather than a loss for, the, uh, for these two trees. And then just one quick additional one. Um, was there any discussion with the applicant about the ability to provide parking if, say, the avocado, avocado was approved but the podocarpus stayed? The podocarpus being, to my eye, a much nicer tree. Uh, Chair Perry and Commissioner McGill, the, uh, the requirement in these cases would be two off-street parking spaces. The space simply isn't wide enough without removal of the tree. Vice Chair Perry and Commissioner McGill, I'd also go back to your prior question where you were asking how this situation differs from the one you considered before. The tree before was a street tree and the property could be developed in a manner to retain that tree. We have public comment and I have two speakers. Mr. Yates uh, Satterley. Well, you've introduced me already. I am Yates Satterley. I live at 227 Jesmary, more or less across the street, about three inches to the north uh, from Mr. Andrews' property. Uh, I don't want to cause Mr. Andrews any problem. He's right here. He's a friend of mine. Uh, but this is such a beautiful tree, and our little lane out there, lane always means short street, right? Uh, this is just a landmark tree there. I've given you pictures of it, one taken from Bath Street. Uh, you can see how large it is. And the other's taken uh, from the neighbor on the other side of Mr. Andrews' property. We who live on the street feel these are very important. We're sort of sorry it's over the property line, <laughs> but uh, that's the way it is. Uh, I have given you the pictures. Uh, I had people supposedly collecting signatures from the neighbors and, the, and my friends fell sick. So I have something like 10 signatures. Uh, it's my observation that many trees in Santa Barbara are in critical condition because of the drought and the resulting restriction of water use. 
I thought this was called a podocarpus. That's not a question yet. Uh, the magnificent tree, however, has withstood the ravages of the drought and, wonderful, and is in wonderful shape, and it would be a terrible fate for it to be cut down. And what a loss it would be for our neighborhood and for the city of Santa Barbara. Mr. Andrews wishes to build an accessory dwelling unit where his current garage is, and the city, I think, requires two parking spaces. The proposed plans call for the removal of the tree to make way for the two parking spaces. Actually, the tree only prevents one of those from being uh, placed where it is. And we hope that the city and Mr. Andrews can work together and figure out a way for him to have his building while preserving the tree. If you can, a superb tree will be saved and the ambiance of Santa Barbara will not be reduced. This sort of compromise would earn the gratitude for all of us who admire the treasure Mr. of Mr. Andrew's wonderful tree. Thank you for hearing this heartfelt plea. Thank you. Should I sit back down? Is that you sit back, yes, please. Um, Alexander Pujols. Good afternoon, I'm Alex Pujol, I'm the um, uh, architect for this project. Mr. Andrews approached me to, uh, regarding the conversion, the garage conversion, and I was also impressed by the quality of this tree, how big it is, the presence in the, on the street is, is undeniable, and I really, uh, I do not disagree with the neighbor at all. The, the problem is that, uh, well, it's in the way, that's, that's one, and two, it's destroying the foundation of the garage as well. And if, you, if you've seen the side, you've seen the crack, and if I open the garage door, you will see the, uh, the, the floor of the garage also being uh, destroyed. And um, it would be basically impossible to, to, to save, because we, once we start rebuilding the foundation, even if we try to preserve it, it will be, it will cut, it, you know, it's, it's right next to, to, to the garage. It's, um, you know, it's very, it's very close. So that's, that's, that's the, uh, really, that's the deal. Uh, we are not planning a carport. It would be open space parking. And uh, we were thinking of removing the, uh, the, the paved area in front of the garage door, putting a tree there, and putting a couple more trees down the parkway. We would like to really uh, make a mitigation, a substantial mitigation for what we're taking down. Thank you for your consideration. We have any questions? Quick. Oh, here, no. Sure. It's for Mr. Downey, so that's okay. <laughs> the questions for Mr. Downey. You can be seated. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. I'll wait. I'll wait till this um, just, did you guys get a chance to look at the garage floor? Uh, Chair Perry and Commissioner McGill, yes, the, the foundation does uh, show cracking and disruption from the tree. Do we have a motion? Well, I, yeah, I would say I did go out to the site today and it is a beautiful tree. Um, but reading in the report about the root intrusion into the garage and looking at the site, there isn't really a way for development without the removal of that tree. Um, I do commend the applicant for the proposal to replace with the four trees, I believe it is, on site. Um, and I think that will be um, a benefit to the neighborhood, not, in, not for a couple of years, but it will be. Um, so I could concur with the um, recommendation of the Street Tree Advisory Committee on this one. Is that a motion? Um, I would, yes, I would move concurrence with the um, recommendation of the Street Tree Advisory Committee for the removal at 2122 Bath Street um, with the condition that the trees be replaced as noted on the plan. Any other questions? Comment. Comment. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? On to the director's report. Oh, I'm sorry. We're at 2514 Castillo Street. 
Chair Perry and Commissioners, uh, next item on your agenda is 2514 Castillo Street. This is a street tree. Um, the applicant um, had requested permission to remove this uh, exact tree uh, in uh, two years ago in March of 2017. The uh, commission uh, reviewed that uh, and uh, concurred with the street tree advisory committee to deny that request. The request was uh, uh, appealed to City Council. Uh, City Council upheld the decision of the Parks and Recreation Commission and denied the appeal. The reasons stated by the applicant are the same reasons that they requested in 2017. They're concerned about the safety of the tree. They are concerned about visibility backing out of their driveway. The uh, photos in the packet are from 2011 prior to uh, the, the last review, um, the tree has been trimmed since that time. It was last trimmed um, one year ago in uh, March of 2018. Um, the committee reviewed it and determined that this tree does benefit the community. Uh, the reasons stated by the applicant are insufficient to justify removal. Their recommendation is to deny the removal. Questions of Mr. Downing? I have a question. <laughs> There's all these photos in here of fallen trees. That's not the tree. This has no, this, this is not the site. These are uh, just different Chair trees. Perry, Commissioner Martinez, there, there are several pictures in the packet. The, the ones where there are gentlemen in the road cutting up the branches are from this tree. The newspaper article is from a recent tree that fell on, uh, I believe it was Cannon Perdido Street. Got it. So was this a tree limb that was removed oh, or fell? That's what you're saying. Okay. 2011. And those are 2011 photos, right? Is, is this a fallen limb or a taken down limb? Uh, uh, Chair Perry and Commissioner McGill, the, the photos that you just showed with the gentleman wearing yellow uh -huh. um, is a limb that broke and fell in 2011. Okay. After that time, the tree's been pruned multiple times, the most recent time one yeah. year ago. Yeah, one okay. Year. okay, okay, okay. Thanks for that. Appreciate it. Any other questions? I'd make a motion that we uh, deny removal of the street tree at 2514 Castillo Street. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Ms. Zachary. Vice Chair Perry and Commissioners, a uh, few things that we wanted to report to you that are going on in the department or have gone on. Um, the first is uh, related to our work in our neighborhood and outreach services section uh, where they partnered with Cottage Medical Center, Cottage Trauma Services, Safe Kids, Santa Barbara County, Child Passenger Safety Education 101, and the California Highway Patrol, whereby they did a car seat safety inspection and installation at the Franklin Center on March 2nd. Um, 91 seats were checked, 47 replaced, which is pretty significant when you think about it, 50% needed to be new, and then nine new installations. <clears throat> and the funding came from Cottage Trauma Services. So back in the old days when we didn't have to sit in car seats, that's no longer the case, and they're very important for saving children's lives, which is great. And then State Trails Day is coming up. Uh, the city, in partnership with um, Santa Barbara County Parks, Los Padres Forest, as well as some really wonderful trail volunteer groups um, are in, engaged in three events a year where we organize together and do trail improvement projects. This is particularly of great value to the community today after the loss of some of our trails associated with the mudslides last year. And so the work effort that um, will be going on this year is for Hot Springs Trail, Romero Fire Road, and Romero Trail, three areas that were adversely affected, both by the mudslides last year and the rain this year, of course. 
Uh, so we're expecting about 75 to 100 volunteers. One of the outcomes of um, the terrible tragedy is that we do have an increase in people wanting to take back the trails and get back and bring their community back to what it was. And we will be working with a number of volunteers, as you can see, um, Montecito Trails Foundation, Santa Barbara Mountain Bike Trail volunteers. We have a great uh, volunteer, Dave Everett, who goes out and monitors and maps and reports back and documents and sends us Google Maps so that we can see where the key trail issues are. So even outside of these days, work goes on on our trails, but these are major ones to really bring everyone together and I'll hopefully also bring new volunteers. Can you explain the scope of the work? Is it brush clearing? Is it trees? Is it rocks? So yes, sir, happy to do that, Vice Chair Perry and Commissioners. It, when, we, when we have days like this, the work that's defined is what's called level one trail work, sometimes level two, depending on, and that's a forest service standard, depending on the skills and abilities of the volunteers. Uh, so anybody can come and help out and they get paired with a leader and it gets determined what's the most appropriate task uh, for them to do. Significant tree work, other major uh, rock related work is done well in advance of a day like this. And there have been a number of resources applied to uh, trail uh, improvements and trail repairs outside of something like this. So the goal is to make it accessible, fun, and make the trails more safe for everyone to use. Thank you. And then we also have, um, it's Easter almost again. I almost feel like we wrote this just yesterday. So uh, every year the department in partnership with the Santa Barbara Firefighters Association, the Police Officers Association, and the United Boys and Girls Club host two Easter egg hunts, one at Chase Palm Park and one at Bonet Park. So we are lined up to do that again this year, expecting around 400 kids. And it's actually really fun to watch. And perhaps some of you have participated or had small children participate. Uh, we often have an Easter bunny show up to help the kids out. A hunt starts at 10 o'clock and of course it's free. Um, and then summer camp registration is moving forward really well, as you can see. And I actually printed but neglected to bring with me a, an update that Summers gave us today. Um, we're doing so well this year, better than last year. People are using our Perfect Mind software. Uh, where we are seeing the need to increase enrollment, we're pushing out uh, messages uh, to remind people it's time, believe it or not, to sign up for summer camp. So we feel pretty good about what's going on um, in that way. Other things that will be happening right before your April meeting is Earth Day. So we participate in Earth Day every year. It's now Earth Days because it's held for two days at Alameda Park. So if you want to come by and visit our booth, um, please do that. And then after your April meeting, but just as a reminder, we have a ribbon cutting ceremony scheduled for the Arroyo Boro open space. You should have received, and if not, we will follow up an email from Liz Smith, the Creeks Outreach Coordinator. But we'll follow up with that. So pencil it in um, and I'll get you the details. We've just completed a really significant restoration project there. Uh, it, the park is open so you can go there on your own accord and, and see what it looks like. And we'll be moving forward with a phase two of that project uh, design work coming this summer. So lots of exciting things happening. And all our other projects, we're still chipping away at getting them to move forward, and we'll have more to report at a future meeting. Um, I would just like to say that I've received many comments on the Cabrillo ball field renovation and the exercise equipment and people enjoying, from just a variety of people who enjoy using it. So um, it's nice to get that kind of feedback from the community. Well, on that note, the feedback that I'm getting is excitement over the proposed and the path forward for Ortega Park and the sense of real community in that park and desire to maintain that. I'm getting quite a bit on that. Commissioners, thank you for those comments. We've also received a lot of positive feedback about the Cabrillo Ballpark, both the equipment and the fact that 
there's a nice way to travel around the park that's accessible, that doesn't put people right next to cars. Uh, the variety of users goes from just the casual recreation user to the very serious strength training user. Uh, we did have, and, and perhaps I can get an electronic copy of it, the Santa Barbara News Press did feature the project fairly prominently a couple of weeks ago, which was great that they reached out to us um, to do that. I'd also add that the News Press also featured our free recreation classes at Career Recreation last Friday. So um, it's nice to get the word out that there's places to go in Santa Barbara where you can recreate and not have to buy a gym membership, be outside looking at the ocean, how many people can claim to do that in their community. So we're pleased with the outcome. It was a long process to get that project done. Uh, but it's being well used by all sorts of users. Any other questions for Ms. Zachary? Do we have any old business? You've got something in new business I thought I saw. What new? The, the, oh. the activity? Do yeah. yeah, you want to say something about it? Well, we just received in our packet about the International Dinner Fundraiser. The, um, at for the uh, Chef Apprentice Program on April, Saturday, April 6th at 5 o'clock at the Westside Community Center. You, you will, um, for $30 per person, it's a wonderful dinner um, prepared by our apprentice chefs, and um, I would encourage the public to go. And Vice Chair Perry and, and Commissioner Longstreet, it's also a fundraiser for mm -hmm. that program. So. Uh, the funds raised last year were then able to be used for the program this year. It's a very special program. Do we have any other questions or business? Then we will adjourn.